Hi, I thought I'd do another landscape today with one of the inks from the Diamine Inkvent Advent Calendar. Try saying that quickly, quite tricky. This one is called Brandy Snap and it's a kind of orangey brown colour. What I do with mine is that I do a little swatch on sticky back paper and stick it on the top of the bottle so I know which colour's which. Probably not meant to shake it, but I do. So for these landscapes, I get, you don't need much of this ink at all. You really don't. Um, so I get ooh, one drop in there, two drops in there, three drops in there. And I'm doing quite a bit in there. I'm going to put the rest back in there. Use it out a bit in my water. And then what I do is I just put some water in. This one is going to be the very background, so I want that to be really quite pale. Um, lost count of how many drops I put in. <laughs> So that one should be a bit darker than that one. This had more ink in it, so that much in. That one I'm going to leave neat. I was just checking that you're actually in focus. So I've got a range of brushes and my blast dip pen. I might use them all, I might not use any of them. Um, I probably should swatch just to see what the colours are doing, but I don't. I kind of just go for it really. And then if it gets, if it's too dark to start off with, I just go over it again with a bit more water. So I'm going to wet my brush. I don't worry because this is only a small postcard size. I don't worry about sticking it down on the paper, on the board. Sometimes what I'll do as well is I'll, I'll wet the paper before I start, but today I'm just going to go for it. And you can see that this goes quite a long way. Does dry quite quickly as well. You can have a bit of fun by dropping some water in and just see what it does. I don't actually have a tissue handy but if I did I could lift that out. I'll just get on. Although I always like to see what it's going to do. And you can see that that's spreading out quite nicely there. So if I was going to be a bit more fussy, just bit, make a bit more of a circle circle. And just dab that a little bit. So we've got a little bit of a, I don't know if it's going to be a moon or a sun or something. It's a circle thing. And if you have a look down here, there's some nice markings where I've done different lines with the paint. Um, so I will use those to my advantage. Sometimes I don't, but sometimes I do. And today I haven't actually done one with kind of, oh, sorry, didn't mean to shake you. I haven't actually done a landscape with quite jaggy rocks before. So maybe that's what we'll do today and we'll make use of these lines here. So you can always tell if it's dry, if it gets a little bit uncold, <laughs> if it's warm to the touch. If it still feels really cold and damp, then it's not quite ready. I don't have my heat tool handy. No big disasters are going to happen if you paint over it. 
when it's not quite dry and in fact you'll get some nice um, spreading of the inks. I should say as well I don't know if these inks are um, light fast or not because there's nothing on the bottle to say that they are and this one is just a standard ink. Some of the inks are just so beautiful they, they um, split out into lots of different colours and some of them quite quite surprising as well. I don't want these to be too kind of regular. Do what it does remind me of though, this kind of thing is in uh, South America there are things called tepuis, T-E-P-U-I. And they are mountains. Well, they're kind of mountains. They're kind of big blocks of rock, um, really high up, and they're quite flat on the top. But they have this kind of structure. Um, I once did a volunteering stint one summer holiday and uh, I did some, I think it was called ecotourism with the Piedmont Indians and I did some building stuff um, and I did some English teaching well with a lovely lovely group of children they were so lovely um so it was, it was i was there for quite a while actually and in the time i was there there were it was a german couple that came and did some volunteering as well um and then there was a, a young lad from canada he was hysterical. I think he was only something like 18. And he'd won his trip at his college. Um, I can't quite, quite remember how he managed to win this amazing trip because it was absolutely amazing. And uh, he, he won this holiday. And he was clearly, clearly, clearly not used to hard work at all. And the uh, people that we were helping, they spoke Spanish mainly. Um, and my Spanish was okay at that time, kind of self-taught. And um, I actually went on to teach Spanish, which is another long story I won't go into today. But uh, this lad, it's so funny because we built some greenhouses and for that we had machetes and we had to cut down all sorts of vegetation with these machetes and uh, oh, we were bitten to death by these little beasties um, a little bit like the midges that you get in Scotland but they weren't called midges I forget what they were puri puri that was what the local people called them and my legs are absolutely covered in them. It was hideous. Anyway, this lad, um, 18 years old, first time away from home. And uh, there was quite a lot of, shall we say, sexism going on within the community. In that, I was an older lady. Um, I'm guessing I must have been, how old would I have been? Hmm. I'll insert the number here to tell you how old I was because I can't rightly remember. Anyway, um, the local people um, really didn't want me to be doing any of the, the hard labour work with the uh, machetes 
and uh, they kind of kept telling me to go and, go and rest, go and rest. Um, and they thought that this young lad, he was, he was healthy enough, he was quite sporty as well, I think. Um, and uh, they thought he was going to be so much better at this um, macheteing down the, the jungle than I was. And uh, it turned out to be the other way around. <laughs> he gave up really, really quickly because he had blisters all over his hands. He hated the putty putty flies and um, just didn't have the energy and the stamina. But we had so much fun because both we were both so different to each other. I learned so much from him about um, sorts of different things, really. Um, and we we built a bakery out of mud um, adobe. That's what you call it. Mud bricks. So I've got some lovely photographs and and videos of. Um, me without any sh any socks and shoes on in this kind of we made it ourselves we kind of built up a mound of mud and like you know standing up and down on the mud the, the mud and the straw to get it all to kind of blend together into something that we could build with and it was just hysterical and somewhere over there it's still a bit wet there but somewhere more down here um there was the cutest little boy and i'd bought myself a kind of peachy colored bucket hat from next to keep the sun off of me and this little boy was just totally in love with my hat um, and when I went to get it back off of him he was not happy so somewhere over there there's a little boy who went around for I don't know how long After I'd left with my next little bucket hat. And in fact, I think that'd make quite a nice story. The story of the bucket hat. The adventures of the bucket hat. I'll find some photographs and put them in um, here and there. Because that was really the trip of a lifetime and I've had several of them in my lifetime because I've been very fortunate. Um, anyway, back to this painting, <laughs> if that's what you can call it. You can see what I'm doing is just layering up the colours and letting them do their thing. I'm not, not rushing them. Um, this is a little bit cool to the touch still so it's probably still quite wet um, I'll show you over on this side I'll use a darker slightly darker ink because I want that's in the background there the lighter ones and coming forward they'll get progressively darker and darker I'll show you what happens if you put the ink onto the, the wet ink that's already wet and actually you can see where those lines we had at the beginning they've gone now disappeared. It's one of the odd things about this ink. It, it doesn't work like watercolour. Initially I thought it would, but I've, I've got no experience with, with ink. Um, and I think I've got the Ink Vent Advent calendar from Dianine two years in a row. Um, I get it through cult pens. And the first year, I didn't know what it was. It was during lockdown, actually. Um, I didn't know what it was going to be, but oh boy, did I have fun opening a box every day. And at that time, I wasn't doing YouTube videos or anything. I think I did put them on Instagram. 
um, for each day. In fact, I might put a, a book thing on here as well, a sketchbook tour. If I haven't, I'll make one because um, each day I used the ink and I made the picture. Um, and that was one of the ways that I discovered this way of doing kind of quite dramatic landscapes. And the secret is, is really not to rush it. And I try not to have, let's see, I'm just making this a bit more bendy, Ooh, a bit more bendy. I try not to have parallel lines like that was at the top there. And this is totally made up. I don't have a, I don't have a reference photograph here. I'm just going to hold it up and you can have a look at how nice that separation is there with the colours and the way that it's kind of cauliflowered a little bit. But we've got a nice line there that could be a ridge in the mountains. So yeah, I'd quite like to go back to that area and see if like, the bakery that we built is still there. Um, we did make bread in it, actually. Well, when I say we, it was the guy that we were staying with. He, he made bread and we, because we built an oven at the same time as we built this bakery thing. Um, and the idea was that we were helping the local people to um, develop tourism in the area because at that time it wasn't particularly popular um, I think I should probably do like a little travel vlog of that holiday because I've got hundreds of pictures I don't know how many pictures hundreds um, but it was quite eventful. Um, and when, when my stint of volunteering was over, I spent a bit of time travelling around. Um, in fact, while, while I was still volunteering, we got weekends off. And this one weekend, I ended up getting on a bus. I booked the bus to this little place and um, well, when I say bus, I don't think it was actually a bus. I think it was more like um, a van type thing. I, it was most peculiar. Anyway, um, I booked myself this ticket on this bussy type, vehicle type thing, whatever it was. <laughs> Uh, to this place in the middle of absolute nowhere and it was a long journey on this bussy stroke van stroke thingy um, and my, my Spanish was okay it wasn't brilliant but it was okay and uh, when I arrived at the place where I was staying it was most peculiar uh, it was in the middle of nowhere. Well, they say in the middle of nowhere. It was in a little villagey type place. And the place where I was actually staying was stunning. It was really stunning, but very, very basic. So um, the ceiling of this place uh, was like a thatched kind of. building um, and uh, so it kind of felt a bit like sleeping out really you can see by the way how I've been using just these four different mixes to just build up the layers and how it kind of feels like it's coming closer I'm not quite decided what I'm going to do with that yet and I might add in some lines to make cloud type things I'm going to leave that in the middle. I like that bit. 
I'm going to carry on building up these bits here. That's still very wet, if you can see. Anyway, from this place where I was staying, I decided to go out for a walk because, I mean, bear in mind, this was before iPhones and things. So all I had, I'm not even sure I had the internet, you know. All I had was a guide, like one of those, um, oh, goodness me, what was that? It was either the Insight Guide to Argentina. Was it Argentina? No. Anyway, all I had was this book. We did have the internet, actually, because I do remember going at the end of the day, walking down to the little town and going into this cafe place and using the internet, which was horrendously slow and very, very expensive. So, um, yeah, it wasn't Argentina at all. It was Venezuela. And the place where we were staying was a little place called Santa Elena. Elena. Um, and it's near the Canaima National Park, which is where you find these tepuis. This actually doesn't probably look very much like the tepuis, but that was my initial inspiration when I started with this picture. Anyway, when I'd gone on this weekend away, I went on this walk, knowing not where I was going. I had this guidebook that kind of told me a bit of a walk. And I might have even borrowed a local map from the people that I was staying with. And I just went walking. <laughs> Middle of nowhere. Um, and I was gone for quite a long time. And that was the other thing. There weren't really any shops. Look how lovely this looks here. Um, so yeah, there weren't any shops in this odd place where I'd landed. Up. I, I can't actually remember the name of the place, but um, I'm sure that in my diary I've, I've got it all written in there. Uh, so yeah, I, there were no shops, so literally the only food that I had was what I'd actually brought with me, which, believe me, wasn't a lot, because in my naivety I thought there would be shops to go and buy food in. I thought there would be restaurants, and there weren't really. But what I did have was the most amazing experience on my own in this place, miles away from anybody. And I have some very happy memories of that walk. There's one bit in particular where I remember lying down on the ground. I used my little rucksack for a pillow and I just started singing. I think I had an iPod, but I might have done. I don't think I did actually. But I just started singing and there was nobody around. I hadn't seen anybody at all on this walk. Um, I did worry a little bit about getting lost or kind of not finding my way back, but I was quite careful to note down where I went along the walk. And because I'd taken my camera, I had a lot of photographs and Really, it wasn't that difficult a place to get lost in. I walked for miles and miles that day. Uh, so that by the time I did get back to this hut type place where I was staying, I was so shattered. I think I just looked through all my photographs and then read my book and then went to sleep. Um, amazing, amazing experience. And there'd been quite a lot of uh, natural disaster in 
one area where we went. So the guy that we were staying with, he would, as well as us working on various projects with and for him, um, he would take us out to different places. Um, and there was one place where there was, there'd been a fire. So there was a lot of fire damage. Um, and it was really quite, quite, quite sad to see all this damage to the countryside. Um, but he was an amazing, knowledgeable person. I think he and his wife were German or Austrian. I forget, but he had big plans for ecotourism in the area. Um, and you know, I'm thinking about it now, I don't actually know how I came across his details because it wasn't one where, you know, you can just go on a website and book it just like that. Um, so I'm really not sure where, where I found out about it from. But like I said, it's probably all in my diary book. And now, when I finish this, clean this up a bit, I am um, very tempted to go and get my diary book, my travel book, and see, see what I wrote about some of the things. I know that I took... Um, video of a sunset because th this place honestly it was the most beautiful beautiful place and um, i'm just going to do some clouds up here this may go wrong i'm going to show you before it does um so yeah there's the most beautiful beautiful sunsets and um I would take videos of the sun going down. It's just a magical place, it really was. I mean, the, the accommodation was really, really basic. It certainly wasn't like, you know, your five-star hotel or anything like that. And there was no public transport from this guy's house into the town or into where we actually went to work. Because where we went to work was, must have been a good two or three miles away, not longer. And it would take us a long time to, to walk from where we stayed to where we were doing the ecotourism work. Um, I'm just going to do a little bit of across the... And some days it was just so hot that you, really you had to get up early, leave early, miss the heat of the day for the walk, walk to this place and then work all day and then walk back when it wasn't too dark. Um, but it was an amazing, amazing trip. So I've just waited for this to dry a bit more. It's still a little bit wet down here more or less dry on that side and I've poured a bit more neat ink into there. So one of the other funny stories that I've got about when I was in Venezuela was when I was coming home and um, by this point, like my hair was a mess. I'd it was after I'd left this guy's house. A bit more neat ink, I think. Um, like I said, I'd gone done some independent travelling. I'd gone to the 
I've taken a very short flight to the little island. I forget what it's called there. Anyway, it's where they've got the three palm trees that sometimes end up when the tide comes in. They end up um, like appearing to just come out of nowhere. And and so I'd, I'd had adventures, basically. Um, I'd, I'd ended up having a lovely time on a, in a beachy type place, um, as well as some really quite rough adventures. And uh, I've still got the skirt I was wearing that day, actually, when I went to the airport. So I had sandals on, like not flip flops, but you know, kind of open toed. Not Jesus sandals, as we used to call them, but kind of similar type thing. And uh, I checked in at the thing, showed my passport to the lady behind the thing. Then I took my bags to be deposited um, so that they could make their way onto the, wherever they made their way. And uh, these two guys came up to me. One had a big trench coat on. It was really quite scary. I really, and the trench coat was odd because we were in an airport. I mean, it was warm for goodness sake as well. Um, anyway, one had a trench coat and the other had um, this massive gun, <laughs> like they do in some of these international airports. And uh, between what they said in sp very rapid Spanish, um, and what I could understand, um, they wanted me to go with them. And I clearly didn't have a choice. And they took my passport from me. And one of them was walking in front of me. One of them was walking behind me to make sure that I followed the other one. And uh, we were walking along this concourse in the airport. And then there was this bit where it said men's toilets. I might have already said I could understand some Spanish. I could read better than I could speak. And I was like, oh, this, this feels weird. Why are these two men wanting to take me down a corridor towards the men's toilets? I was really, really scared by this point. Um, so anyway, they took me into this, down this corridor, which actually veered off as well. So like the gents was on the right and the bit that we went, you had to walk past the gents and then turn left to where their office was. Um, so we went down this other little corridor and then they took me into this really teeny tiny room that had a desk and telephone and that kind of thing on it. And then they proceeded to get me to um, put my bag on the table and take everything out of my bag. So I literally had to unpack everything. And it wasn't like I had a nice suitcase. Because I'd been traveling, it was like a rucksack type thing, huge rucksack type thing. Um, it was a nice one, don't get me wrong, very nice rucksack. And uh, so I had to take everything out and they were asking me questions about some of the stuff that I had because I had souvenirs. Um, and I think in the end, I think I decided that they thought I was a smuggler or a drug smuggler or something. <laughs> Which, if you know me, could not be further from the truth. Anyway, um, I've messed that up there a bit. I'm going to stop there, I think. So, once they'd checked everything out, um, and I bought this lovely round woven basket thing. Something about that big. And in it, I had things like shells from the beach, some stones, just little knickknacks that you like to take home from holiday. 
And they were looking at me as if to say, what on earth is this woman doing? But I do think they were looking for drugs. Uh, and they were very confused about why I, a Western woman, would be in the depths of um, Venezuela where I was. Because like I said before, it was a very, very remote area where, where we did this volunteering. Um, and then once they'd searched through everything, which by the way, I'd had a job getting into the rucksack because I'd bought so much stuff on the, on the, on the trip. I was allowed to pack up my bag and then head back to passport control and everything. But they escorted me out of this room, back down the corridor, past the, the men's toilets. And um, my heart rate was just going, like I can't tell you how fast it was going. Um, and it was the most bizarre way to end what had been a wonderful holiday. Um, but it's a good story to tell, isn't it? We always have to have these lovely stories. Anyway, here's my finished little piece. You can see I have torn up the paper there a little bit where I was a bit aggressive with my dip pen, but I think it adds some nice texture. And you can see that just by diluting the ink, I've got so many different tones and layers built up on there. Anyway, thank you for listening to my rambling about my, my uh, volunteering time in Venezuela and I hope you've enjoyed my little painting. Not quite sure how much of this rambling will make it into the video, but thanks for watching. Bye.